is about efficient MPC with a mixed adversary. And it's a joint work with Martin Hirt, and we're both from ETH Zurich. So this is about multi-party computation, or MPC, where a bunch of users want to evaluate some joint function of their input without revealing anything about their input to the other users. So this means that in the ideal world, they would have this ideal trusted third party, who just collects the input, computes the function, and distributes outputs. Uh, but in reality, of course, we can't trust parties. So what the users do instead is to distribute trust among many parties, which will run some sort of um, distributed protocol. And the protocol guarantees that as long as not many of the parties are corrupted, um, this is just as good as this ideal trusted third party. Now, one can consider different uh, variants of MPC. And the setting that we look at in this work is where the parties want to evaluate an arithmetic circuit over a finite field. So with multiplication and addition gates. For efficiency, we want to minimize the number of field elements communicated per gate. And we want perfect security, uh, so guaranteed output delivery, unbounded adversary, and no error probability. And we consider threshold adversaries uh, who corrupt at most T parties. So within this setting, uh, one can define many different types of corruptions with different strengths. So the strongest type of corruption is active, where the adversary fully controls corrupted parties. But this comes at the cost of being able to tolerate only n over third corruptions where n is the number of parties. So quite a few, and this might be not suitable for many applications. Then we have more benign adversaries. For example, passive adversary corrupts parties by uh, learning their internal states, but he doesn't control them. And this means that we can tolerate more, up to n half corruptions. But now the problem is that even if a single party crashes because the computer breaks or there is a power outage, then the protocol is completely insecure, it doesn't guarantee anything. Uh, and then one can also consider extremely benign adversaries who don't learn any internal states, but just um, but the adversary can crash parties. And here we can tolerate as many corruptions as, as you want, so uh, less than n corruptions. But now the obvious disadvantage is that this is kind of too weak, so we can't really um, count on, on the fact that nothing leaks from, from the parties to the adversary. Uh, so all of these settings have advantages, all of them have, dif have dif uh, disadvantages, uh, and so applications may find it, so you might find it hard to, uh, to choose which one is, is good for, for your particular application, and maybe something in between would be better. So what if we could have a protocol that tolerates a bit less than and half passive corruptions, but uh, at the same time, a couple more fail stop corruption. So still, if someone crashes, we still have security. Um, or maybe a third passive corruption, so a few passive corruptions, but still a bit of active corruptions because it's probable, but not so much. So uh, a setting that uh, deals with all of this is called the mixed setting, which has this cool flexibility in that a protocol for the mixed setting uh, takes as parameters these three thresholds, the ATP and the TF, which satisfy this equation. And the protocol is secure as long as less than TA parties are actively corrupted, less than TP party parties are passively corrupted, and less than TF are fail stop. So this offers flexibility, uh, meaning that you implement one protocol, and by adjusting parameters, you can have any pure setting or any setting in between. Uh, so this is a really cool feature. But how about communication complexity? So we will measure communication cost in the circuit size, so the total number of gates, and this is C, and the, and the circuit depth D, which is the biggest number of multiplication depth, uh, gates that need to be evaluated in sequence. So in the literature, we have um, pretty efficient protocols for the pure settings. In particular, for the active setting, we have this linear protocol by Damgard and Nielsen. Um, for the active setting, we have this first protocol, which is almost linear because it has this additional term dn squared. And the term was removed last year by Goyal et al. Uh, now, what about the mixed setting? Well, unfortunately, flexibility comes at the cost because we are still stuck with the first visibility result, which uh, modifies BGW and inherits the inefficiency of BGW. Uh, in particular, we have to communicate Cn to the power of six field elements. 
So to be uh, more concrete, if we have 100 parties and the field uh, has element of si elements of size 64 bits, this means that parties have to communicate terabytes of data, which is prohibitive, actually. Um, and this is exactly what we tackle in this work. So we propose a protocol that, has, uh, that works for the mix setting and has communication complexity uh, linear in C, but also has this uh, additional term dn squared. So even for the, so for the previous example, where the, the first mixed protocol communicated terabytes of data, our protocol would only communicate some kilobytes of, of data, which seems like possible to implement. Uh, and I want to stress that even though we have this additional term dn squared, in the worst case, if the circuit is completely tall and, um, and thin, uh, we have communication complexity cn squared, which is orders of magnitude better. Uh, so to summarize, we have a protocol for the mix setting, so flexible, uh, also efficient, uh, as efficient as almost as efficient as the active protocols, and simple, which you're going to see next. So now a very brief uh, overview of our techniques. Uh, so a takeaway of how we achieve this. Uh, we use techniques for the uh, for the active setting. These techniques allow to um, design uh, linear protocols for this setting. Uh, and these include hyperinvertible matrices, which allow to compute many multiplication triples, um, player elimination framework, and batch public reconstruction. And unfortunately, in the mixed setting, all of these techniques have issues. And perhaps the biggest issue is that with fail stop corruptions, because there are so many of them, uh, they either destroy correctness or efficiency. Or in other words, if you try to adjust the parameters of the active protocol to preserve correctness in the mixed setting, you lose efficiency. And on a high level, this is because these active techniques um, rely somehow on the fact that the work can be distributed among correct parties. So there are many correct parties in the active setting, <clears throat> only a third can be uh, corrupted, so we can distribute the work among omega of n correct parties. In the mixed setting, we no longer have omega of n correct parties, and in fact, there can be only constant uh, number of, of correct parties, so there is no one to distribute uh, the work between. So how do we deal with this? Uh, our solution is to execute this maybe slightly modified active protocol, but without adjusting the parameters to preserve correctness. But every now and then we will execute this heartbeat protocol. And this is so simple that I can even put this on the slide. So the goal is to check if some part EPI crashed uh, during the previous active protocol. And for this, uh, PI sends some value, say one, to all parties. And then parties run consensus with input alive if they received the value and uh, crashed if not. So clearly, if PI crashed in the, uh, in the previous protocol, he won't send anything to any party, and the result of consensus will be crashed. So now we can eliminate him and repeat the protocol. Uh, the last slight issue is that consensus costs, uh, namely theta of n squared. So we don't run it after every communication run, but only sporadically. And with that, we still have to make sure that the privacy is preserved even with crashes. So that's the summary. And now, in the rest of the talk, I want to show you um, these techniques on an example. Uh, an example sub-protocol of, of our protocol. So for this, we first uh, need the protocol overview. So um, it proceeds in the standard offline-online model. Uh, where in the offline phase, um, parties compute a number of multiplication triples, which are just triples of sharings um, of random A, random B, and the product C. And in the online phase, they evaluate the circuit gate by gate, gate by gate using the triples. And the invariant here is that the values are on the wires are shared using Shamir sharing with degree TA plus TP. Uh, and this is how many internal states the adversary gets in the mixed setting. So, the sub-protocol I want to uh, examine now is the evaluation of multiplication gates in the online phase. So we have a multiplication gate, inputs are two shared values, uh, 
uh, it consumes a triple and outputs the sharing of the product. And not surprisingly, we use the technique by Beaver. Uh, and here, parties reconstruct blinded inputs towards all parties. So X blinded by A, Y blinded by B, and then they locally compute the sharing of the um, product C using homomorphism. So I included correctness. Um, secrecy is obvious. If you've never seen this, you can pause the video. Um, otherwise, the punchline of Beaver's technique is that uh, it reduces evaluation of a multiplication gate to two public reconstructions. So now all we need is uh, a protocol for an efficient protocol for public reconstruction, and this is what we're going to do next. So for this, we first need private reconstruction, meaning that we want to reconstruct the sharing of a value S towards some designated party PI. And this is done quite simply. Uh, every party PJ sends their share to, uh, to PI. PI collects these shares and then finds a polynomial G of degree at most D, such that at least the A plus D plus one points J as J lie on the polynomial and the secret is G of zero. So why does it work? Um, for correctness, we need two properties. Uh, first, we need that PJ, uh, PI actually computes the correct polynomial. Uh, but this is quite simple here because only the A points can be changed by malicious parties. Um, and any missing values not, not sent by crushed parties or maybe malicious parties will be ignored by PI. So <coughs> the polynomial that uh, PI finds is determined by the remaining d plus one points from correct parties. So this works. Uh, the second property that we need is that PI always actually does receive at least the a plus d plus one correct shares so that he can always find the polynomial with the correct number of points on it. And this is also true in the mixed setting. Uh, and this is because PI always receives at least uh, n minus the a minus the f correct shares from correct parties. The number of correct parties is basically n minus the a minus the f. Uh, and using our two equations above, this is at least the a plus d plus one. So this always works. Uh, it's correct. The communication cost of this is O of n. And this also means that we can't simply use it for public reconstruction by running it uh, towards every party because that would cost O of n squared. And we want better. We want a linear protocol. So we have to do something smarter. And the smarter trick will be uh, the batch public reconstruction by Damgard and Nielsen. Uh, so this was introduced for the active setting. So for the moment, we are in the active setting with the, uh, the P and the F equal to zero. And the trick is to amortize the reconstruction. So we will try to reconstruct uh, many values, S1 up to ST plus one, and amortize the cost. And here the trick is to represent these shared values as coefficient of a polynomial G of degree T. And now we can evaluate this polynomial on values one up to N, uh, and end up, end up with um, the evaluation points u1 up to un. So we kind of expand the t values um, into n, to uh, a longer string of n values. Uh, and the trick here is that the sharings of values ui can be computed locally using homomorphism. So with this observation, the protocol is as follows. Uh, we reconstruct the value uj towards party pj, so every party receives one value. Uh, in particular, pi will receive ui, and now pi sends the value ui to all other parties, and then collects all the values that other parties send to him, and does the same as before. So he finds a polynomial g of degree at most t, such that at least t a plus t plus one points j uj lie on the polynomial and he outputs the coefficients. So now we need to choose the parameter t such that uh, we have correctness as before. So for correctness, again, we need two properties. First, that the polynomial g is correct, but this holds um, for the same reason as before. <coughs> uh, so at, at most, t a points can be changed by uh, malicious parties, and the remaining points come from correct parties, and they determine the polynomial g. Uh, for the second property, we need that PI receives, always receives at least T A plus T plus one correct shares. And for this, notice that he always receives at, mo at least N minus T A uh, 
correct shares from correct parties. Uh, and this is because every correct party actually does receive the UJ because private reconstruction always worked, as we said before. So uh, PI always receives at least N minus TA correct shares in the active setting. Um, and now we choose the biggest T that satisfies this equation, which is N minus 2T. Uh, what about communication cost? Well, the whole cost of this routine is O of N squared. And the number of reconstructions that we did was T. Uh, and T is at least N over 3, uh, because it's N minus 2TA. And uh, this results in, uh, in evaluating omega of N gates at the cost O of N squared. So the amortized cost is O of N. Now, what about the mixed setting? So now we move to the mixed setting. Uh, the first, and can we adjust T so that it still works? So the first property of correctness still works, obviously. Uh, and for the second one, now PI can only count on N minus T, A minus T, F correct shares. So you see that you kind of don't have so many correct shares to, uh, to distribute, correct parties to distribute the work um, among them. Uh, and so if PI can only receive N minus T A minus T F correct shares, then the biggest T that we can choose is N minus 2 T A minus T F. Um, but this destroys uh, but this destroys efficiency because um, if T F is big, then this can be constant. So for example, if T F is N minus 1, then this results in T being 1. So we didn't gain anything uh, better than the trivial solution of, of doing uh, private reconstruction towards every part. So it seems that it doesn't work. How do we solve this problem? Uh, so we deal with this by adjusting T so that it's even more efficient. So we choose even bigger T. Uh, but the protocol gives a weaker guarantee, which is detectability, which I'm going to explain in a moment. And then a detectable protocol can be made fully secure using player elimination framework. And of course, we have to adjust both to, to work for the mixed setting. These are techniques for the active setting. So a protocol is detectable if it can give incorrect result, but uh, either the output is correct or if it's incorrect, then at least one correct party notices this. And we say that this uh, party who notices this ends up unhappy. And this would be the end for the active setting. Unfortunately, in the mixed setting, we can't count on this because uh, maybe all of the parties who noticed some um, inconsistency crash uh, and can't tell anyone about it, so we add the second condition or a party crashes. So to summarize, uh, either the output is correct or if it's incorrect, then some party crashed or some party noticed this. And then we need that privacy is always preserved so that we can repeat the protocol without violating privacy. So our detectable public reconstruction uh, will look almost the same, except that we add this additional line which says that um, now PI tries to find the polynomial with the correct degree, uh, with the correct number of shares lying on it. Uh, but it can be that there is no such polynomial, in which case PI becomes unhappy. Uh, so now detectability is weaker than correctness, so we can still, um, still guarantee this. Uh, and this is obviously true for this protocol because um, if all parties end up happy, then the polynomials that they compute are um, determined by the t plus 1 points from correct parties. Uh, and now we choose the biggest t that we can, which is n minus ta. So this means that pi now uh, wants to receive points from all parties, and it wants that all of these uh, points lie on the same polynomial of degree at most t. Uh, and for efficiency, of course, we're even better than um, than the original protocol, and we again get the amortized cost O of n. Uh, so the only thing left to do is to make this protocol robust using the player elimination framework. Uh, so here is the overview. It's maybe a bit complicated, so you might want to think about it offline a bit. Uh, but it's a really nice idea, I think. So we are given a protocol that detectively reconstructs L sharings at the cost O of Ln. And assuming that, that L is big enough, this is true for our previous protocol. Uh, 
uh, and the goal is to robustly reconstruct uh, big uh, shearings at the still lin linear cost. So this is done by first partitioning the L shearings to be reconstructed into TA plus TF segments uh, of length L. And L is now this big L divided by TA, TA plus TF. And then these segments are processed in, in sequence. So for each uh, segment, we do as follows. Uh, first, not surprisingly, we try to uh, re reconstruct it uh, detectively. And now it could be that everyone is happy that we want that uh, we reconstructed the, the shillings, uh, but it could also be that someone is unhappy and we don't have the results yet. Uh, and we want to check whether which one is the case. So this is called fault detection, and this is done by PI telling everyone if he's happy. And then he collects uh, these, these messages from other parties and becomes unhappy if any other party is unhappy or doesn't, um, doesn't send the value. So if some party crashes, maybe, or if some party is unhappy, PI becomes unhappy. And um, then parties run consensus on the happy bits. So if the result is happy, then this means that this first step was not interrupted and that uh, the detectable reconstruction worked. And so we can go to the next segment. Otherwise, we want to um, localize the, the culprit who caused the, uh, caused the failure. And this is called fault localization. Uh, and here we could come up with some handcrafted, complicated thing from the mixed setting. And trust me, it, it is complicated if you just try to do it naively. So what we do instead is, uh, is to go for simplicity. And we run the protocol as in the active case. So this protocol localizes a set of, for, for, for this protocol, crashes don't exist. We localize a set of two parties who disagree. So one of them must be corrupted and we can uh, eliminate both of them and repeat. Uh, in the very stop case, it's not no longer true because we can't um, eliminate a failed corrupted party together with an honest party because we might uh, end up eliminating all honest parties which is not good. Uh, so to fix this, we run the heartbeat on all parties after this step, and then eliminate as follows. Uh, if we detect that some party is crashed, then we eliminate these crashed parties. Of course, they could be also active parties um, acting as face up, but this, uh, this doesn't matter. It's even better that we eliminated an active party. Uh, and if all parties is, are alive, then this means that we actually are in the active case, so we can eliminate the two disputing parties and one of them is crushed. And then we repeat. So why does it work? Um, it's efficient because the last three steps are actually uh, quite expensive, but they are repeated at most the A plus the F times. This is because uh, every time we eliminate either an active or a fail, fail stop corrupted party. And so this is independent of the circuit size. Uh, the circuit size only comes in the first two steps, and uh, so this is linear in the circuit size. Okay, to, to summarize, uh, we give a protocol for the mixed setting, so it offers flexibility, um, it works for all pure settings and all settings in between. Um, it's efficient as active protocol, so it's possible to implement it maybe in some near future. Um, and it's simple. So we introduced this heartbeat protocol, uh, which deals with crashes without adding too many if-else conditions and complexity. Thank you.